she grips the gun in a gloved hand, understanding that's all she really can do. She doesn't know if she can take this, she's shaking and her heart is breaking, but she doesn't really have any other choice. She's stuck between a rock and a hard place. They told her it's time to be a big girl and step into the real world. He strolls along steadily, cigarette between his lips underneath the hazy orange glow of the city streetlights. It's close to midnight and he seems oblivious of the insidious act that's about to take place. He rounds the corner. She sees him and freezes, almost falls to her knees. It's so unfair. How can they expect her to do this? She can't go through with it, but she has to. She curses that damn man with his ridiculous plans. Gambling. That's his vice. But when you don't have enough money of your own and you take out loans that you know you can't repay, what do you expect to happen? Actions have consequences. The mob don't part with the cash lightly, so tonight he has to die. She's under the impression he has no idea what's about to happen, but he's fully aware and whilst he's scared, he knows this is the only way that things can go. He stands, savouring that final cigarette, admiring the reflected city in the harbour water, mind filled with thoughts of his daughter, knowing that he ought to have done things differently and wishing that his wife would just hurry up and shoot him in the back of the head. Of course, he doesn't actually want to die, but he has no doubt that there's no way out. The mob handed him a shovel and he dug his own grave with it, so now the only way to be brave, to save his family, is to accept his fate. He closes his eyes and waits. Her finger lingers on the trigger, immense tension gripping every fibre of her being. She's hesitating. Wishing there was a way of communicating to him that he's in danger. They're metres away, but it feels like the expanse between them is infinite. She watches as the clouds of smoke float away from him, like his soul, which she's about to set adrift. The idea rips her apart, and she knows after this she'll never be whole again. She can't breathe. All she needs to do is squeeze, and she pleads with her finger, but it just won't tighten. She's so frightened and she remembers the darkened room, the man behind the desk. It's you or him. You can shoot your husband now and consider your debt paid or you can refuse and then you all lose. Your family can die together but there's really no need for that. Just do us this one favour and you can be free. That's what she was told. Her blood runs cold, her daughter is only seven years old, she has a whole life ahead of her, and why should she pay for the sins of her father? And that's it. That's the thought that sets her free. The realisation that what she's about to do will be done through love. Not anger, or hate, or greed. Just the simple desire to protect her child. The gunshot rips through the peaceful night, tearing apart the silence. His body splashes into the harbour, blood mixing with water. This is a portrait of a family tragedy, and he was the artist. But he doesn't regret his final breath, because with his death he may have saved the two loves of his life. His daughter and his wife. Headlights illuminate her pale face as the car races around the corner. She's pulled inside and then they drive off into the night.